Welcome to Kadros Tigmede Stress. I'd get God's revelation in medical missionaries, Bible studies, family life messages from the Bible, Bible prophecies, sanctuary messages up to the close of the time, and many more. Hello, friends. How are you? I'm greeting in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. My name is, is Collins Mochoi, a servant of God. And for a long time, we have been having an idea of having a YouTube channel where by all the messages which God is bestowing unto me, I share with other friends. Remember, I'm being told you to be faithful stewards. Uh, this is my very first video, and we shall be looking deeper into the Word of God. Now, this being the very first video, I want to welcome you and show you why did we call it Cardostic Ministry? Because you couldn't ask. And what should you expect while you tune in? Before I begin with showing you where we draw the name, allow me to start by showing you whatever you should expect a little bit. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 45. This is the book of Matthew, the very first book in the New Testament, the Word of God. Matthew, chapter 24, verses 45. Bible, the Word of God, reads, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler of his household, to give them meat in due season. Beloved, according to God, God wants to have faithful servants who will give people meat in due season. In other words, who will give people the one is one from God at the right time. Now, let me show you where we draw the name Kadostik and what you should expect from Kadostik Ministries. It is the book of Exodus, chapter 25, verse 31. Exodus, chapter 25. Uh, chapter 25, verse that one, it speaks about the candlestick and where it was in the sanctuary, which God, be, which God instructed Moses to build. Now, let's read the book of Exodus, chapter 25, verse that one. The Bible word of God reads, And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made, a shaft and his shaft and his branches, his bows, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. So this is candlestick which was to be made in the sanctuary. But now, who had commanded even the sanctuary to be built? If you go with me, the book of Exodus, the same Exodus, chapter 25, verse 8. The Bible reads, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary, that I may dwell among them. So the sanctuary was to be made so that God can dwell among the Israelites. And now, friends, you could not be familiar with this message of the sanctuary, but it forms the seven pillars of the Seventh-day Adventist, which is also in the book of Proverbs chapter 9. So it forms the seven pillars of our beliefs, of our faith, fundamental, of our church, of our faith. Now, friends, since the sanctuary is one of the pillars, and here I want us to look deeper. That the candlestick was to be made of pure gold. The unique characteristic of the candlestick. Uh, we know where, very well that the sanctuary had three apartments. The outer court, the holy, and the holy of holies. Candlestick was not in the outer court. It was not in the most holy place. But it was in the holy. And now what we know is that the whole apartment, the everything that was there in the holy place, it was made of wood, probably like shitim. For example, the heart of incense. Then it was overlaid with gold. We know that the table of shoebrand was not made of pure gold. But, but, there's an exception when it comes to candlestick. Candlestick was made of pure gold. Purely gold. Now, friends, you may ask why. Everything, mostly when now we go to the most of all, most of most holy place or holy of holies, there was the master seat, there was the hack of covenant, there was cherubims. For example, the master seat was made of purely gold. 
the cherubims was made of purely gold. So by thinking, human thinking, you will say that the candlestick was not supposed to be in the most holy, was not supposed to be in the holy place, but they would, they would have been placed in the most holy place. Now let me show you some unique characteristics about the candlestick. And uh, why we should really learn to follow and see other messages that will proceed from God through this channel. Uh, when we go, for example, let me show you the shoe brand was, which was also in the holy place place was not made up of gold it is the book of exodus chapter 25 verses 23 and 24 the bible reads chapter 20 verse 23 thou shalt also make a table of shittim wood two cubits shall be the length thereof a cubit the breadth thereof and a cubit the half the height thereof and thou shalt overlay it pure gold and make thee unto a crown of gold around about so, friends, we see that the table of shoe was made of shitty wood, but overlaid by gold, which was also in all a place. Uh, also, when we read, for example, let's read the book of Exodus chapter 26, verses 35. It says, Thou shalt set table without veil, and the candlestick over against the table, and on side of the tabernacle, toward the south, thou shalt put the table on the north side this is the place in the arrangement of the sanctuary in the holy place now let me show you something also that will maybe straighten your mind do you know when jesus christ read the book of matthew chapter 5 or when he was speaking the ones written in the book of matthew chapter 5 verses 14 he referred to the candlestick do you know there's something interesting that jesus wants us to know about it do you know do you know even the book of revelation Jesus Christ is speaking something. He is expressing himself as the one who walked in the middle of candlesticks. And what is the candlestick? Go with me in the book of Revelation, chapter 1. It is the book of Revelation, chapter 1. Let's listen unto what John, John who was a disciple of Jesus, writing about Jesus Christ. Revelation is the last book of the Bible. Chapter 1, I shall begin from verse 13. Or let me begin from verse 12, so that each and every one of us shall understand. And I turned to see the voice that he spake with me. And being turned, I saw even seven candlesticks. Verses 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with garments, down to the foot and got about the paps with a golden girdle. So there was one like the son of man walking across on the means of candlesticks. So what is candlestick? We know that one of the principles of the Bible is that the Bible should interpret itself. Go with me verse 20 of the same Revelation chapter 1. The Bible reads in Revelation chapter 1 verses 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sowest in the right hand and the seven candlesticks. The seven stars are the seven ages of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks, which thou sowest, are the seven churches. So the candlesticks represent the church. Represent the church. Churches. And now the unique thing is that whenever Jesus Christ is speaking, we know that the candlesticks, they hold lamps and the lamps shed the light. Are you getting me? The candlesticks hold the lamp. And the lamp shines light. Let's go to the book of Matthew now. What Jesus Christ spoke. The book is Matthew chapter 5. Verses. We shall be in from verse 14. Matthew the very first book of the Bible. Chapter 5 verses 14. The Bible reads to 16. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set high on hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it at a bush. But a candlestick. But, but, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So, my beloved, I would like you to know that the candlestick owns the candles to shed light. Now, when I read this verse, it takes me to sanctuary where we have begun. I don't know to you, but it takes me to the sanctuary. 
And God's Spirit is speaking and saying that we are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. Can I show you something unique about the church? And which church we are speaking about? And what you should expect? When we go to the book of Revelation chapter 12, the book is Revelation chapter 12, well, it's speaking about a certain woman who was dressed in three lights. We shall see them and where they originated. We may also want to refer to the book of Revelation chapter 17, but keep tuned. The book is Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible reads, And there appeared a great water in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and moon and her feet, and upon her hand a crown of twelve of stars. And she... Let's stop from there. We see that this woman was clothed in three light. He was clothed in sun. Under his feet there was moon. And in her crown there was twelve of stars. But what does woman represent in the Bible? It represents a church. It represents a church. Let me prove. Go with me in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5, verses 23, 25, and 32. The book of Ephesians. Chapter 5, verses 23, 25, and 32. Let's begin from verse 23. The Bible reads, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So, Jesus Christ, speaking through Paul, writing this letter to Ephesus, he is saying that, husband, love your wife, just as Christ loves the church. But now what does that verse 32 say? Verse 32, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. While Paul was speaking, was not speaking about a husband and wife. Yeah, it's true, they should love. But he is giving a comparison, one by the husband represents Christ and the church represents the wife. So, woman, woman in Bible prophecy, woman represents the church. Now, we have seen in Revelation chapter 12, verses 1, that this woman was, where, was clothed with the sun, and the heart of it was moon, and in her crown was 12 of stars. It represents a church that is light. And the beloved. Do you know, even when Jesus Christ created, when God created in Genesis, he gave only three lights. He gave three lights. So this woman has all the lights. Let's confirm the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 14. Genesis, chapter 1, verses 14. Let's hear the word of God. Genesis, chapter 1, verses 14. Uh, the Bible reads, and God said, Let there be light in the firmament of heaven, and divide the day and the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years. We shall revisit this verse in the next videos that will come. That the days, the lights were to divide, so that we can have the day and the night. We shall revisit. But now let's go to verse 15. And then, and let them be for light in the firmament of heaven, and they give light upon the heart, and it was so. Verse 16. And God made two great lights. Then greater light to rule the day. Which light to rule the day? The stars? Moon? Which is this great light that everyone can see that rules the day? Sun! We shall confirm. Let's continue. And the lesser light to rule the night. Which is the lesser light that mainly rules the night? Sun? No. Moon? Let's continue. He made stars also. So God made the sun. He made the moon. He made the stars. What did the woman wear? He wore, he was clothed with the sun. Moon was at her feet. And he had 12 of stars. So it represented the church with the true light of God. The church that has the light of God, and it is the light to shine unto all the world. Unto all the world. Beloved, when we go to the book of Revelation, chapter 17, there's another woman or another church that is called Babylon the Great. She also has light. <laughs> but the light, friends, does not originate from heaven. 
neither do they come from God. Let me just give you a glimpse. You are not reading deep into it, but so that you can know that, of course, there are ever, forever, there are only two groups. If there are three, they must join and they form one so that they can be two. The book is Revelation chapter 17. Let me just show you something before we go also to the holy place so that you can understand who are to minister unto these cadres. Who? 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 And what does the one the priest mean? The book is Revelation chapter 17 verse number 1. The book is Revelation chapter 17 verse number 1. The Bible reads, And there came one of the seven angels which and seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. We know waters according to 17 verse 5 of the same revelation. It is many people, multitudes of people. But now, let us read verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple scarlet, in purple, and scarlet color, and decked with gold. Decked with gold. And the precious stones, and the pearls, and the golden cup in her hand full of abomin abominations and the filthiness of fornication. Do gold shine? Yes. Do pearls shine? Yes. Precious stones shine? Yes. But where do they get light from? They doesn't have light of its own. They were not created by God to give light. So friends, there are of course two lights. That which is real and that is which is false. But now, uh, since this was an introduction video, let me show you something also very unique. That now that we know that the candlestick was to be placed in the holy place of the sanctuary, or in the second apartment of the sanctuary, you wouldn't like to know what else is related with the candlestick. Candlestick. I wanted to show you that it was priests who were ministering unto the candlestick to hand well. And these priests, who are they? According to the Bible, let's go there now. We were in Exodus. Remember, we were in Exodus chapter 25, verse 31. Uh, I want us now to read the book of Exodus, the same Exodus. Uh, we shall go to read verse 27, verse 20. Exodus chapter 27, verse 20. The Bible reads, And thou shalt command the children of Zion that they shall bring thee pure oil, olive beaten, for light. To cause the lamp to burn always. We shall look what is this oil that was to be brought. But now, uh, who is the light? And what, shall, what is our work here? Jesus Christ is speaking in the book of John, chapter 8, verses 12. He says that he is the, he is the light. He is the light. And also, also, I want to show you about the priest. The book of John, chapter 8, verses 12. We start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So it is the fourth book of the New Testament. Chapter 8, verse 12 of Jesus Christ himself is speaking. Then speak Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall, but shall have light of life. So Christ is the light. But then we know if Christ is the light, then we also become the light. Why? The book is First John. First John. First John. Chapter 2, verse 6. First John, chapter 2, verse 6. The Bible reads. First John, chapter 2, verse 6. First letter of John. He that saith he abideth in him, hath himself also to walk, even as he walked. So if Christ walked as the light of the world, we also ought to walk as the light of the world. Are you getting me, friends? By the way, even the book of First Peter, while Peter is speaking, Chapter 2, verses 21, he is saying something very interesting. He is saying something very interesting. Let us go there. The book is 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 21. The Bible reads, For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So Christ is suffering. Leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. So if Christ was light, we ought to be light. Are you getting me? If Christ did not sin, we ought not to sin. So we are also the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. 
So friends, the card was was made of pure gold. Why? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. The book is book of John, chapter 17. Chapter 17. Jesus Christ is speaking of very good things for us. By the way, friends, when I'm depressed, when I feel hopeless, when I feel that this world is turning me in a way that I never expect, I turn to the book of John, chapter 17. I listen unto the prayers which Jesus Christ offered for us and for people who have not yet heard the message. For you, probably. And for me. Let us listen. The book is the book of John, chapter 17. I want to read few verses, few verses, few verses, so that we conclude. Book is the book of John chapter 17. While Christ was praying, for example, like uh, verse uh, 9, he says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So Christ is speaking for those disciples which he earned at that time which is me and you. Then he does not only pray for those people, but uh, let us now listen at verse, at verse 10 and continue. Uh, the Bible reads, verse 9, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, verse 10, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, I am glorified in them while they are light. And the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16 says, So let thy light shine before men that they may glorify God. And Jesus is saying that we are glorifying him by our doing. And whoever belongs to Jesus belongs to the Father. Verses 11. And now I am no more in the world, but this in the world I come unto thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those who thou hast given me, that they might be one as we are one. <laughs> Beloved, go and read the book of Exodus chapter 25. Going down, Jesus Christ is praying that we become one. Do you know, the candlestick never had a joint. It never had one. Or let me refer you there. The book is Exodus chapter 25. The candlestick had not even a single joint. And it was to be made. And who are used to make the sanctuary? They were chosen by God. They were to make a candles with no joint. It was all but one thing. The book is Exodus chapter 25. Let's begin from that one where we left. This message is very interesting, friends. I wish we really desire to read and to listen and to what God is speaking to us. The book is Exodus chapter 25. We left at that one. Let us go verse 32. Six branches shall come out of the signs three branches of the cardo stick out of one side and three branches of the cardo stick out of the other the bowls made like three bowls three bowls made like arm to almonds and the knob of flour in one branch and three bowls made like almonds on the other branch with the knobs of flour so that six branches that come out of the cardo stick and the cardo stick shall be four bowls made like almonds with their knobs, with their flowers. And there shall be a knob under two branches. So all this, all this, they were to be made. Verse that seven, and thou shalt make seven lamps thereof. They shall light the lamps thereof, and they may give light over against it. Friends, the candlestick was to be made united, all of it. So this is why Christ is praying that we may be one. Deeper, deeper now. Verse 17. Uh, we end verse 11. Let's go now. Chapter 17, verse 12 of John. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that we, that, that the scripture might be fulfilled. We shall look at the son of perdition. Who is he? Of course, we know it's Judas, but we shall look. As we continue. Now verse 13. And now I come unto thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have joy fulfilled in themselves. And I have given them thy one, and the world hath eaten them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Jesus Christ is not praying that we are being taken from the world, but we should stay here, but let him, let him protect us from the evil. 
So the candlestick is lifted unto the mountain. It is not taken from the wall. And by the way, that is why it was in the holy place, so that the priest could diminish, could diminish, day in, day out, every day, unto the sanctuary. Beloved, let's read these few three verses as we conclude. The book is John chapter 17, verses 22. And verse up to 24, the Bible reads, And the glory which thou gavest me have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Christ is still emphasizing that we be one. We be united. People who believe at him. People who are proclaiming his message. So, beloved, you will come to realize that Jesus Christ said that, commanded, or when the candlestick was to be made, to be one, to be united. So, Christ wants us to be united. Something else, we have seen that Christ was the light, so we should be the light. Let me also show you the glory which God gave Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave it to us. Jesus Christ gave it to us. So, as he was the light, so should we be the light. The book is uh, now verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, and that they behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou art lovest me before foundation of the world. So, beloved, Jesus Christ, the glory which he was given, he gives it unto us so that we can be the light. Thank you for watching our video. Let's pray. Our loving Father, Father who lives in heaven above, we glorify and honor thy holy name. Thank you for loving us so much that God you want us to be like candlestick, though we are in the holy place, whereby we can be doing the atonement for the world every day we can be praying every day for the world that we may shine and show the glory of you unto the world use us let you be glorified now and forever in jesus name we pray and believe amen if you have any question please write it down there god bless you abundantly for watching